Hi friends, in this video series, we will deploy machine learning models to various services from GCP, AWS and Azure. Today we are going to deploy the model to a local server using Fast API, which automatically create this beautiful docs uh, using Swagger. Now let's quickly test the model. So here we have uh, two methods, guest and post. So let's invoke the post method. So this model, it predict the species of iris flower using these four features, sepal length, width and petal length and petal width. So we have the feature values and let's execute or invoke the endpoint. And this is the output we got. So the species is versicolor and we have probabilities for all three classes. Okay. So let's see, given an ML model, we will see how to create uh, this local server. All right. Now, first we need an ML model, right? So in this series, we are not going to focus on how to train a machine learning models, but as we need a model to deploy, we will use a simple model. Okay. So this is a scikit-learn model, uh, some very standard uh, imports. We load the iris data set. We split into train and test. Here we are creating a pipeline with two components. The first one scales the feature and the second one build a decision tree classifier. We train the model and we make the predictions on the test data. Here we are validating it. And then finally, we are saving the model as a job lib file. Okay. It's a very simple script. So let me remove my existing model file. All right. So I'm just retraining the model, model performance, and we have saved the file as a model.joblib. Okay. So this is what we just saved. Now let's see how to deploy this model so that we can create an API endpoints as well as uh, that UI. All right. So here we have another file deploy.py. I'll share all this code in my Git repo. So as I mentioned, uh, so there are a couple of different ways uh, we can create uh, this local server, right? Uh, using Python, for example, uh, Django, Flask, and FastAPI. FastAPI is becoming very popular uh, in the last few years, and it's very easy to use. Also, uh, it comes with this default Swagger uh, documentation. Okay, so all right. So import FastAPI, and then we are importing this Pydantic to create the data types, meaning uh, are the data models. So machine learning models, they take uh, features as an input, right? And different features, uh, they can have different data types like uh, 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 ints, floats, strings, uh, etc. right? Now, the model work only if all features are in the right expected format. So to enforce that, we can create these data models, okay? Uh, we'll see in a minute. So then uh, jablib to load our model and then the numpy. Okay, so we are creating a fast API app here. You can provide a title and description. And here we are defining our input model. So what is the expected input uh, for a post method uh, or uh, for this ML model, right? So it's going to take these four features or four values, which are the simple length width, a petal length and width and their data type is float. Uh, in this case, it is uh, simple, but uh, in a real world scenario, you can uh, imagine uh, more complex features with different data types. Now, this is optional. If you want, we can set the default values also and also provide some description. Let's say uh, uh, our app is going to be used by some business people or some uh, end customers who don't know much about uh, these machine learning, etc. Right? They are just going to use the UI. So for them, uh, with the UI, we can provide this description so that they know uh, what to feed. All right. And similarly, let's define our output data model, uh, which has two values. The first one is species. That's the name of the species, which is this string. And the second one is uh, this probability, which is a dictionary. Okay, I'll show. As you saw here, 
this is our output model right so we have one string value and then one dictionary uh, with floats i mean we don't need to define the floats but uh, it's a dictionary so that's our output model um now this is very important the reason is now every time we somebody invoke a model we want to serve the results as quickly as possible right so we would like to have the model already loaded into the memory right now imagine if we have some tensorflow or uh, llm type model which can be of uh, several uh, gigabytes if we are loading the model just after invoking the model the user has to wait a uh, quite some time uh, for the model to load and make the predictions right so what we are doing here is as soon as we deploy the app so the event on event startup we are loading the model okay so using job lib we load the model to memory and this one uh, we can even define uh, within the predict function but here we are defining uh, the species uh, mapping uh, as well so if it if the machine learning model it predict or it output only the uh, numbers right so if it is zero that's setosa if it's one versus color etc now this is uh, how we define during the model training all right so this one it runs only for the first time when we deploy the server all right and the second one this is the get method uh, it does nothing except printing this uh, statement that my uh, it's a ml prediction api up and running right so this is more like a health check type of thing uh, the actual predictions we make using the post method because we want to uh, uh, input the features to our ml model so here we are creating this predict now this can be anything right uh, uh, th this is just a uh, post method uh, name uh, you can have anything so here we will enforce our data types okay so our output so this is a uh, sorry first api keyword the response model so the response model it should be of type this output data model or it should follow the data types defined here okay and then we have this function here the input should be our input data model okay so the input data model uh, which should contain these four uh, features and all of them should be a uh, floats okay so we take the four features as input and then we get the value sorry we get the values for those four features we make it into a numpy array and we call the model uh, either uh, the prediction or the probability since we are interested in probabilities also so we are uh, calling the model uh, to get the probabilities okay and then we are just matching the probabilities to the species and finally we are creating this payload which should have the species as well as the probabilities okay so those two values so that's all our web application or web server is so once we have done that then in order to deploy we'll use this uvcon so let me copy this command all right so we need deploy.python file and we need model.joblib those are the two files we need to deploy this model right now this name is very important uh, okay maybe i'll run it here uh, so if you look at our deploy file we have defined our fast api app as an app okay so for example we can call it anything let's say we, if we call this app 2 then our deployment code this app must be app 2 so here what we have is our file name which is deploy and then our app name which is app okay so these two should match with what we have as our python file and 
what's the app name inside the python file now here i get an error saying address already in use right so here i am trying to deploy the model to port 8080 on my local server right or i am trying to expose the uh, expose this port uh, from which uh, i we can access the model because i have already deployed the model to the to that port which is what you see here okay this 8080 uh, it's saying uh, that uh, the port is already busy right either we can deploy to a different port like this for example or we can free the port i'll show you how to free the port so that uh, we can uh, do the experiments on the same port now this reload command it's very useful uh, in debugging node for ex debugging mode for example if we are making any changes to uh, our app here uh, those are automatically uh, loaded okay all right so let's uh, free the port so here we are finding out what is running at port uh, 8080 and we are killing or freeing that port okay so now the port is empty now i can we can deploy the model to the same port all right application startup failed uh, what's happening start reloading loader uh let me see if it's working i think some port issue let me deploy to a different port it should be fine so let me deploy to 8181 address already in use i've been doing some experimentation so all these ports are busy yep application startup failed node array pickle has incompatible d type uh let me check what's happening job lib file name uh, i understand what i mean what's happening so uh, let me go to my kunda environment so i just uh, as you can see here i was in this python base environment now i have loaded to uh, uh, this my python environment let me retrain the model so the model retraining uh, the reason is because i have different versions of uh, python and the model is trained using one version of python and we are trying to load it using other version so now i am in my uh, right environment now i'll use the same environment uh, to deploy the model okay address already in use uh, actually let's just okay let's free up the port sorry yeah they should free up port 8080 that's killed that's good and then deploy to the same port okay it's working as expected so take this url now it should work okay so this is the root page visa um go to deploy so this is the root page okay uh which simply so shows this message uh, we can have it as a health check uh, to display this status code to uh, 2200 as well right now we can access the documents using by slash docs so it will pro uh, provide this beautiful docs okay so the first one is this get method which uh, uh, simply display that message so for example if i try it out uh, execute so it shows this message okay but we are more interested in the post method uh, yeah so here we have the post method now let's see what we have here so the input data model if you expand it is expecting this four features and all of them are numbers so if you expand further this is the description sample length in centimeter and the default value is 5.1 so this information is coming from our pydantic data types okay 
So the CPU length, the default value is 5.1. It's the CPU length in centimeters. Okay. So this is what we have here. So that's why the Pydantic is super useful, not only to create this documentation, but also to enforce uh, what types are expected. Okay. So if you look at the output model, similarly, it has these species and probabilities. We don't have any default values or any description here. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, this is good. But let's invoke the model. Uh, but not always we are going to use this UI to invoke the model, right? So what we do is, uh, let's invoke it using requests as well as curl command. So here I have a Python file, uh, with just importing request library. And our endpoint is this local 8080 port, and it's a uh, predict method, right? Here is our payload with the four features and the headers, uh, both uh, the expected as well as, uh, I mean, the input and the output are the response, both are application JSON type. And here you are invoking uh, the post method. So the in endpoint, the headers and the payload, we are simply outputting uh, uh, the response. And similarly, here we have the curl command. Uh, so the URL, which is exactly the same, and then, uh, we have the payload. So the curl command, it's again the post method. So accept the input as well as the output and provide uh, the payload uh, with the URL. Now be careful, uh, sometimes uh, the format of this payload uh, can be a little tricky. Okay, so we have these two. Let's run them to see if we get uh, what response we get. Okay, all right. And, uh, yep. So I'll call my Python uh, test dot py. Right. So this is what you see. The species is versicolor, and the probabilities for the three classes. And similarly, uh, let's test our curl command, yeah, we get exactly the same result. Okay. And finally, just to show you uh, uh, how we can invoke from external services. For example, here we have the postman. So our endpoint is, uh, it's 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 8080. And uh, let's in, let's uh, invoke with this get method. I think we do, should not send print. Yeah. So the message is this, which is what we see bef before. Now let's call, invoke the post method. But the endpoint is this predict. And then here is our payload. Uh, let's invoke. Yeah. So we got the same response, which is versicolor and the probabilities. Okay. So to quickly summarize. Once we have trained the model using the standard Python script, in order to deploy, we are using fast API. Okay. And we are using Pydantic to enforce uh, the data types uh, uh, and also to create uh, useful documentation. Okay. So we create the app and we have defined our input model, output model. We are loading the model which can be very large only at the very first time when the application is deployed and then on we have a get method just to check the health of our service and finally we have the post method where we are enforcing the input data type as well as the output data type we call the model and we prepare the output or the results the way we want it and simply we are returning the results okay uh, that's all for this video. In the next video, we will see how to deploy uh, the same model to a Docker container. Okay. And then we will go to cloud services. Okay. That's all for this video. Thank you very much.